So after uh, some mail delays due to the recent uh, snowmageddon that we had about uh, two weeks ago, the shut down this side of the province of Newfoundland for about uh, a week and a half, we got some mail show up. So one thing we got is the carb kit for the C70, but that's for a different video. I got these LED lights that I'm going to be using to upgrade the light on my snowblower with. I actually got eight of these, so a couple for me, a couple for my buddy, and I'm probably going to sell the rest and use them for installs for other people. But most importantly for this video, we've got our 88503 bearings and our single 88505 bearing so we can start putting our drill press back together. So let's dive into it. For the first part of reassembly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this little clip off with a screwdriver and I'm going to get my 88505 bearing pressed down onto the shaft and then I'll get this clip put back on. Now one thing I did when I was knocking this off, I used a steel bar and when I was hitting it I kind of bent in little bits here and there. So I'm just going to take a file clean that up quickly so this will slide back down over the quill shaft. So there's the upper pulley that goes down into the top of the head. The belt from the motor comes over, goes around this and back to the motor again. I've got the new bearing on there and the old bearing is still nice and good. So we're ready now to press this back into the top of the head. So now the next piece of our castet is getting our 88503 bearings down into this part of the press. So this is once again the part that the gear rides on from the handle that then pushes your uh, your quill and ultimately your truck and your drill bit down into your work. So how this works is one side of the quill has a race that's slightly thicker or larger in diameter than this part of the quill. On the other end you see this shinier spot here. This is where This piece sits, uh, I'm probably going to regret putting it under. And so this comes up through, or actually goes down through, sorry. Goes down like so, and then the bearing slides onto this. So what will ultimately end up happening is we'll push bearings into either side of this, and then we'll knock this quill up into the post here. Okay, now that we got the quill 
back together. This feels really nice with those new bearings, I must say. Once this thing gets going to grease and those bearings heated up a bit, this is gonna be silky smooth. So, now that this is together, I'm ready to press the upper pulley in to the top of the drill press head. So when I got to this point, I realized that the clamp that goes on here, uh, I still hadn't cleaned it up and painted it yet. So you'll see it right there. And I also went ahead and cleaned up like the spring housing and whatnot. I've got my uh, gauge. It shows you how far you're drilling down. Cleaned up as well as the hardware to mount that clamp and the gauge, or sorry, mount the clamp to the bottom of the quill and then clamp the gauge, or I guess bolt the gauge to the clamp. So I'm trying to get my spring rewound and back in here, I figure what I'll do is I'll make use of the set screw that's in this. So I've got just a big screwdriver in here. I'll go ahead and tighten the set screw on that. So now I should be able to set that in the groove there and start winding the sucker up. See how it goes. So now that I've got that in place, what I want to do is get the handle back through so I can clamp onto it. So that might be a, that might be the trick here. we go get our set screw tighten on I don't want this to slip so give a little extra twist take the scripts off the scripts the vice grips and now we should have a proper springy, springy, and be ready to put our little clamp back on. So, and there we go. So now we have our bottom clamp put on. We also have our little gauge here on. The spring is installed and there's fantastic tension as you can see. We can spin this down and the spring takes it right back where it belongs. So we'll just hit this with some light lube now on our uh, final assembly. As you can see on the bottom here, some of my paint came off and that's because I was using a bit of brake clean on the inside to make sure that this will ride clean on the inside of the, uh, the head. 
So I'm just going to touch this up with some paint later on. But for the time being, and hopefully this is the last bit of drilling through steel or iron or cast or whatever that I have to do uh, with this. Hopefully going forward it'll be with this here. So let's get after it. So hopefully now with this zoomed in, you can see the uh, the new thread that I'm starting to cut down through that uh, that hole. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send you guys away. I'll go ahead and finish tapping this hole and get the other side drilled and tapped as well. And then I'll bring you back when we're ready to start putting everything together. So there we go, we've got the base and the table on our post. Now we're ready to slide our collar on and then slide the head on. So I just finished getting the uh, the belt and whatnot on, the belt carried on, so I'm going to give you guys a quick dime tour now to see what this looks like up close. So we've got our base, with the pole we've got our table here, come up further we've got the head, so we've got our chuck and our quill, spring, belt guard, our belt, I'm just using a simple uh, M10 bolt here for the time being. Got our motor on, and this thing is uh, looks like it's good to go to me. So I'll back it up. I'll stick you guys back in the tripod so you can have a little look from afar. We'll get it powered up, and you can see how it sounds. So that's going to be it for this series of videos regarding the restoration of this Canadian Blower Forge number 15 four model drill press. Uh, let's give it a quick. Uh, power up. Now I'm going to put a switch in place eventually and I've actually got those there. I bought a set of switches, push-pull switches from Busy Bee. But for the time being, let's just fire it up and see how it sounds. Sounds good to me. So, hope you guys enjoyed following along on this one. Stay tuned, now that I've got a proper drill press, 
I'll actually be able to use this for further fabrication projects and also when I'm working on old motorcycles. So I just want to thank you guys for watching. Hopefully we'll see you in the next one.